it's an example of um, a magazine project which isn't contained by a magazine. So this is an obvious way that I think, but maybe it's not an obvious thing to, you know, everybody else, but it's um, a project, a magazine curated project. And how it came about was that um, contemporary dance for me is a source of such rich inspiration for pop culture. Um, pop culture kind of just steals most of its most of its good ideas from from contemporary dance, and it ends up in music videos, and it ends up in advertising. And contemporary dance is really, really lack of funding, um, but it's an incredibly pure source of inspiration. A little bit like poetry, um, one of the least commodified art forms. Um, it's incredibly expensive to stage, to tour, and there's not a lot of financing from it, um, especially for more maverick and experimental um, 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 choreographers. Um, it's an area that um, has had an incredible history and relationship with fashion, so going right back to the Ballet Russe, going um, right through um, time, fashion and dance have, um, have had um, a relationship, an association, a dialogue um, that's been important culturally. Um, dance is important to people. Most. What I r realized was that um, a lot of what we were seeing on video, we were putting a lot of dance on Nowness. I was putting a lot on 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 Nowness. Actually, has a lot of dance film. Um, was a film of dance that was choreographed for the stage, and it was filmmakers trying to capture choreography that was um, that was created um, by chor choreographers for a proscenium, um, and the 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 chat the, the 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 sort of brief here that we put out with this project was how can we create a group show which really looked at the dialogue between fashion and dance today and and it was curated for film for the screen um so i contacted a number of designers and we started pairing designers and choreographers together some of whom never had worked together some who'd had a relationship um, they were all in a kind of competition together, which was interesting, so it sort of made them feel a little bit kind of like, okay, we've really got to push this further because Mucha Prada was working with Pina Bausch, but, you know, um, Francisca Costa from Calvin Klein was working with Julie Kent, and then Russell Maliphant was working with Iris Van Herpen, and everybody kind of knew who, what everyone else was doing. And what was amazing is they're so different that you get this really interesting kind of polyphony of... Um, stories around the relationship between fashion and dance and you really see um, movement choreographed for the screen so in a sense it's a new kind of group show um, and we're hoping that it's successful enough that we can repeat it and do movement too and also experiment with things that I wasn't able to experiment in this one which is things like VR um, because I was really keen to add a VR component into it but that that I think will have to come for for movement part two and can keep it as a continual dialogue um, looking at this relationship um, and um, you know looking at how explosive it can be in our for, for culture sort of mini diaglia of moment yeah obviously so they'll all be online next week and i hope you get a chance to to, to see them and you'll be able to see them on anothermag.com um, but it was a year and a half this project and I, another Another thing I have to tell you is that it was a year and a half and I, I, I really, um, my everybody kind of worked on it for, for, for the love of doing it. The designers, so just to sort of talk through the financial aspects of it because I think it's interesting, a little bit interesting, it was interesting to me anyway. Um, the designers covered the cost of doing the fittings. The filmmakers, we gave them a small budget but if they wanted to take it further, they invested in the films, they owned the films Right? So we don't take kind of IP or ownership on it. Um, and then I had to find the extra money to um, put in, put the budget into the film, etc. Now filmmaking is really expensive. It's much more expensive than, than fashion photography, you know, yeah. at this level. And um, I thought I could get it sponsored. I really thought that I would find a brand who would be brave enough to do this. And as the kind of money was going out, to pay the filmmakers and, and to sort of build the project that um, my exposure wouldn't be that long, you know, because someone would come and kind of sign up and say, 
yeah, I'll, I'll get behind this idea and maybe it would be a headphone company or maybe it would be, you know, uh, a car company or whatever. And I, my, but uh, a year later, there was nobody. <laughs> and I was kind of a little bit too embarrassed to tell the designers who'd already committed and were already started doing fittings that there was no money. So I was kind of holding this baby. Um, but eventually, a sponsor did come through and we got lucky. Wh and, which um, is? Which was Ford. Yeah. So a car company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we made them an extra film. And that's how we did it. We made a film yeah, specifically yeah. for the sponsor. And this is a good, uh, a good story to tell because it, it also involves like endurance, uh, persistence, and uh, like. Yeah, it's risk. No? it's risk. It's risk. And I think that if you're trying to produce new realities, you have to take an element of risk. And, you know, when Damien Hurst did Freeze and he put that show and he came out of the gallery system, you know, what was he saying? He was saying, I want to take control of the curation of a show of young British artists, but we're going to pay for it ourselves. So we'll find our own space, we'll do it up. I mean, this is common knowledge now. It's like, if you want to control things the independent way, yeah. going back to the independent way, then you have to take the risk yourself that, you know, it might fail financially. You might not, it, it can't be about the money. It's got to be, my, my belief is if you just put it out there and you persistent enough, somehow it will find a way to exist because a good idea has to exist. Like the forces, the supernatural forces at work will make it happen if it's a good idea. If it's a shit idea, it won't. And I sort of feel like the sort of, the metaphy not the metaphysical world, but the sort of mythological world will take care of it, you know? Well, but it's also metaphysics in a way, because, I mean, what we, wh what we just said is so important and also educational. Faith. In a way. It's faith. And the fact that you, because you're also an entrepreneur, obviously, and, uh, and, uh, and you told the, st I mean, what is fascinating, not a, Let's not talk about Jefferson, let's talk about the method. Is that so many characters in one person, it's an orchestral view. Like call uh, it, we call it, I call it making it up as I go along. <laughs> Which is good. There's no method to the madness, it's just if you just, you know, it, uh, it, the, the, that project had, had to exist. You know, the films were too good. Some, there was going to be a way. Yeah, I, I, I do believe too, because I mean, also the metaphysical club, the first time I, sp I spoke about it, nobody <laughs> wanted to do it. Not, I mean, you and the people, but I mean, it was not completely uh, trustable, because it's a new kind of thing. And then here we are. So it's important. Uh, and I remember how difficult it was like to pin all the agendas of the people. And this this and shouldn't exist. I, I, shouldn't, this, I shouldn't be the first magazine in the world to have put... It's a little bit like a space race, right? Every publisher in the world wanted, want, has been wanting to for the last 10 years to do a cover of a magazine, a full cover. I mean, Esquire did like a mini one because they put like a bit of video over the eye and it moved and, you know, it kind of created the illusion. But every publisher wanted to do the first magazine with a full LED moving screen, right? It shouldn't have been an independent Publish. punk publication from the UK. You know, it should have been like Vogue or like, you know, one of the big guys. We did it because, you know, did it, was it luck? Was it being in the right place at the right time? Was it having, I don't think I had the idea. I didn't have the idea. Do you know what I mean? Everybody had the idea. Or the idea was out there, you know? Um, it was, there was a good phrase actually. There's a, there's, a, there's a producer called Robert Evans who made a movie called Kid Stays in the Picture. And if you ever get a chance to see it, I highly recommend it. He was the height of, he ran Paramount Studios in the 70s. And he said, there's no such thing as luck. It's the moment where preparation meets opportunity. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful phrase. So maybe that's something to take home.